So I have a story for you that's gonna piss a lot of people off, but it's okay because it's also gonna help a lot of people. There's a really great lesson in here, so listen up. Okay, so first of all, I've been away for a while because I've been spending so much time as a guest on podcasts, recording podcast episodes, like every day. <laughs> so um, that actually has something to do with my story, but it's also why I haven't been doing these daily uh, messages for you guys either. But so this is what happened. This happened a few days ago. I wanted to wait until I got in the right energy to tell it, right? Like to make sure that I processed it completely and make sure that this message comes out um, with as non-judgmental. This is not about being judgmental or mean or anything like that. It's all about the lesson. Okay. And I was triggered when this happened. I was definitely triggered, but um, that's just when you are in a state where it's like, okay, why did this trigger me? What do I need to look at? And what did I learn from this? Okay. So about three days ago, I was a guest uh, on a podcast. So the host invited me to be on and I'm not going to give her name or the name of the podcast or anything like that. Um, cause, cause like I said, this is not about being unkind. She was an intelligent woman. She was a physician actually extremely intelligent. I have nothing negative to say about her on that level. She was actually also extremely nice. Um, but we, um, we weren't a match and she actually stopped me as I was talking during when, when we were recording um, to, you know, we it was recording, it was not live. So that's perfectly okay. She just stopped me. It's like, we're not, we're not a match. And I can tell you she's 100% correct. Um, her message to the world is um, about body positivity. And um, she was about a hundred pounds overweight. I would guess, I don't know. Um, looking at her Instagram, She's been like doing a yo-yo thing, right? And we were supposed to be talking about addiction. Um, that's what she invited me on to discuss is addiction, right? And I've, I, you guys might have already heard me say before that um, I'm not good at moderation. Most people with the addictive tendencies, we're, we're more like, um, we don't have that dial. We don't have that moderation dial where we can, you know, just kind of adjust it. It's we're all in or we're all out. Like we can it's very easy for us to binge on something that's good or not have a stop button for drinking. You know, we just want one more, one more, one more, you know, and we just kind of lose control a little bit. And what she was teaching is um, that everyone has the ability to moderate even if um, they're addicts, which I don't find to be true in my life or any of my clients' lives. Like some people have an ability to moderate, yes, but you're not an addict. If you can moderate, you're not an addict. So, and I'm just going by the way that she looked and the way I saw her weight going up and down. Um, she does not know how to moderate, right? Um, that means, that being said, we should love our body always like on the journey of treating it better and feeding it foods that love us back. That's what loving your body means to me. Stop giving yourself toxins and foods that, that don't love you back, right? So that's showing up on your body as inflammation and disease and diabetes. And there's so many problems. Like when someone is doing this to themselves with food, um, you're literally killing yourself just like somebody who's over drinking alcohol or doing drugs. It's not different. You are still killing yourself. So I'm all for body positivity. However, don't be so positive that you're enabling these destructive, self-destructive behaviors. That is not good. That is not healthy. And I cannot believe a physician was teaching this. What she said to me was 100% of my clients have learned how to moderate. Okay, then if that's true, they're not addicts. And I don't believe that's true. I believe you're teaching them to just love themselves overweight. And that's something completely different. We aren't teaching them to actually have self-awareness, which is what I teach is uh, spirituality, a big part of it. It's not like magical and woo-woo. It's self-awareness, really digging deep, doing the shadow work, bringing all of those rejected parts of ourselves to the surface where we can heal them. And, and a lot of that means sometimes admitting, getting out of denial. Like I was in denial forever. I was a food addict, sugar addict. 
I was, I was, I don't call myself an alcoholic because I don't believe we should say that, but I am someone who used to have a horrible relationship with alcohol and I've healed it by not having it in my life anymore. I just don't fuck with it. Okay. So, um, I don't know anybody who has a bad relationship with alcohol that is able to perfectly moderate. Okay. Like I could moderate you guys. I could moderate 20 times in a row months in a row i could moderate but i'm all, eventually i'm always going to screw up i'm always going to overdo it and then all the blame shame guilt all of those horrible low frequency feelings and and i'm right back to you know screwing up again so in in that old pattern so for me it's just was better to shut it off shut the window lock the door don't let alcohol in my life anymore like i said just quit fucking with it because i never wanted to feel like that again that out of control feeling. Sugar does the same thing to me, okay? Like, I, I'm i not great at just having one cookie. I want the whole sleeve. It's delicious, it's good. And then sugar doesn't, my body does not react well to sugar. And I just, that's what is a beautiful thing, is self-awareness and just knowing this. This is spirituality. Becoming aware of yourself enough and loving yourself enough to stop the madness. That does not mean we don't love our bodies and it is body positivity. I'm all for it. Okay. So before you comment that I'm not, but love your body on your journey to treating it better, to being more mindful and more careful about what you eat and getting out of denial and telling yourself you can moderate when you know you can't, you know, you can't. You know, this woman could not moderate. It was showing up on her body. Like she can't lie to me. Like it's an alcoholic could lie to me and be like, yeah, I already ever drink. You know, this woman was in denial about what she was doing to herself because, and she reason she stopped me. She was like, stop. It was because she doesn't, she's not trying to hear that she had to give anything up. She didn't, she wasn't ready to abstain. She wasn't ready to let go of her addiction. And what happens is when we aren't ready to hear something, we get defensive. We feel like we're being attacked. We literally feel like we're being attacked when we're not ready to hear something, when we're not ready to give something up that we love so much. And I get it. Food is comfort, right? We're filling a void. We're comforting ourselves. You know, sometimes it's an escape from our reality. Same with alcohol, right? You know, there's always a reason, but what we're, you know, we're really blocking ourselves from living the best life that we can and filling it. So when, you know, like for me, the spiritual recovery and spiritual upliftment and raising my vibration, you know, these addictions start to fall away, you know, and now they're gone. I don't even get tempted anymore because I, I've gotten to the point where I actually love my body and I love myself and I don't want to hurt myself. That's true body positivity. That's true loving your body. The other one is just like accepting, okay, I'm going to accept myself the way I am, even though I'm like slowly killing myself. And I don't think that's loving your body. I'm sorry. So I had to tell the story. I feel like somebody needed to hear it. Maybe many people need to hear it. But remember, any time that you are enabling an, a, an addiction in your life, don't turn it around into something that's positive. I'm just accepting myself the way I am. That is no different than an alcoholic drinking themselves to death and being like, I'm just, like, like if I started drinking again today and started telling you guys, it's okay, you know, like if I mess up now and then and I can't perfectly moderate, um, you know, no big deal. You know, it, it, I mean, I'm still slowly poisoning myself over time and I know it's bad for me. I know I'm going to eventually overdo it, even though I can moderate for months at a time. And it's just not worth that trade-off to me anymore. It's not worth that trade-off that risk reward, like you, and that's a personal decision. Of course, I'm not saying everyone needs to quit drinking alcohol, but if, if you have, or if you're like me and you have that tendency to overdo it and keep having another drink, even though you, you know, making rules for yourself is a red flag, by the way, if you're having to be like, okay, I'm only going to have one or two tonight. And then you overdo it and you're not keeping your own rules that you made, you've, you know you've already got a problem since you're making those rules to begin with. Because like this woman, this physician was teaching intuitive eating, but if you're an addict, guess what doesn't work? Is your intuition is not working in that moment. It's impulse and lack of control. The impulse takes over and that is the whole 
you know, tricky part with addiction. It has nothing to do with intelligence. I'm an intelligent person and I still got caught up in all these addictions, okay? It's a lot of it to do with, I needed to do shadow work. I needed to address some things from my past because when we don't deal with past traumas, it's gonna show up in our life in every aspect of our life, in our relationships, at work, in our friendships. It is everywhere, okay? You, when you don't deal with them, they don't disappear just because you're shoving them down. They are still there. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope that if you do realize you have an issue, reach out to me. I offer a free discovery call. Um, that just means like, hey, you know, maybe I do need coaching. Let, let you know, let, maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching is what I need to, you know, help deal with some of these feelings that I have that I'm covering up with my addictions. Um, give me a call. Go to my website, dayonelifecoaching.com, and I will set up a free Zoom. So you're one-on-one -on -one with me, and it's totally complimentary. Basically, you're just giving me a little bit about what you're dealing with. I give you a little bit of information on how I work, and we decide together, um, are we a match? And if I'm not a match for you, I could probably give you guidance for something that would be a better match. So dayonelifecoaching.com, find me, and um, yeah, contact me. Let's, let's see if we can uh, work together. I hope you guys have a beautiful day.